Welcome to another deep dive. Today we're looking at something that you might not think is super fascinating at first glance. Manufacturing. Oh, but it is. It really is. We're diving specifically into the Smart Student's Guide to Smart Manufacturing in Industry 4.0 by Mike Nager. Yeah, it's a book that takes this topic, you know, manufacturing, which can be pretty complex, and breaks it down in a way that anyone can understand. Yeah, and don't let that title fool you. Right. It's called a student's guide, but uh. honestly, it's packed with great insights for anyone who wants to learn more about the future of how things are made. Absolutely. I mean, think teachers, counselors, parents, even elected officials making decisions about education funding. Right. It's for anyone who wants a clear picture of what modern manufacturing is all about. And it's written in such clear and simple language. It is. You know, like one of the things I love is how it just tackles head on um, this really outdated image of manufacturing. Right. You always hear about it being dirty, dangerous and dull. Right. But this book really sets the record straight. It does. Mm. And it talks about how automation and all these safety regulations have really completely changed the game. Absolutely. This is not your grandfather's factory anymore. It's not. Yeah. But it goes even deeper than that, right? Yeah. It argues that, um, you know, a lot of the job losses and the shift of manufacturing overseas wasn't because of automation itself, but outdated federal policies. It's a point that so often gets missed in these discussions. Right. The book really digs into how... Um, how these policies kind of uh, incentivized, inadvertently incentivized companies to move their operations overseas to places with lower labor costs. Yeah. And then that had this ripple effect, you know, impacted not just the manufacturing jobs themselves, but whole communities. And they even mentioned Ross Perot's, you know, famous giant sucking sound. Oh, yeah. Prediction about NAFTA and, and how all those manufacturing jobs going away would affect wages in the U.S. It's fascinating to look back and see how those predictions actually played out and the book doesn't shy away from exploring those consequences but then it shifts gears right <laughs> and it gets to the heart of why manufacturing matters and not just for like the economic reasons yeah it dives into this critical issue of national security which i think is something that uh you know people don't always think about right but the book really highlights the dangers of relying so heavily on foreign suppliers for all these important things, mm -hmm. especially, you know, in times of conflict. Right. If there's some kind of conflict, what happens when those supply chains get disrupted? Exactly. And it, it paints a pretty vivid picture of what could happen. Like they specifically mentioned the vulnerability in the defense supply chain mm -hmm. where there's only one supplier for solid fuel rocket motors. Oh, wow. Which are used in missiles. That makes you think. It's a little scary. And it also talks about how... Um, China has so much control over rare earth processors, uh -huh. which are critical for a lot of the technologies that we rely on. Absolutely. It's a real wake-up call about the risks of kind of putting all our eggs in one basket, so to speak. For sure. But it's not all doom and gloom. Right? No, not at all. There are some bright spots. The book talks about these manufacturing USA institutes. Okay. Which are really cool. They're basically these partnerships between... Uh, industry, academia, and government that are really focused on boosting U.S. manufacturing. So kind of trying to bridge that gap between like all the research that happens yeah. and the actual production in the real world. And hopefully make American manufacturing more competitive on a global level. Okay, yeah. But then the book dives into something else that I thought was really interesting. It talks about how manufacturing actually creates wealth. Yes, mm -hmm. that's a big one. It busts that myth that manufacturing only benefits huge corporations. Right. It shows how it can be this powerful engine for creating jobs and spreading wealth through communities. And, and it talks about this concept called the manufacturing multiplier effect. Okay, so for someone who's not an economist, break that down for me. What is the multiplier effect? So basically, every manufacturing job creates this ripple effect and ends up supporting several other jobs in the economy. So, you know, it's like if you drop a pebble in a pond, okay. you see those rings spread outward. Yeah. So boosting manufacturing doesn't just help factories. It benefits the entire community around it. That makes a lot of sense. And they actually used like some statistics to back this up. They do. They mention that every dollar of manufacturing output generates $3.60 in economic activity. Wow. It's pretty incredible. And they even quote um, Harry Moser, who's the founder of the Reshoring Initiative. Okay. And he says that every manufacturing job supports an additional 3.6 jobs. So it's not just about the economics. Right. It's about the well-being of people. Exactly. And then this brings us to the main focus of the book 
which is smart manufacturing. Right. And this is where things can get a little confusing for folks. You hear about the Internet of Things, the Industrial Internet of Things, Industry 4.0. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot to wrap your head around. But the book does a fantastic job of just explaining all these terms in plain English. Yeah, I like how they break it down. So let's start with the Internet of Things. Okay. Or IoT, as people like to call it. What exactly is that? Mm -hmm. And how does it relate to manufacturing? Well, you know, think about all the devices you have in your life that are connected to the Internet. Your smartphone, your smart TV. Maybe my refrigerator. Maybe your refrigerator. That's the basic idea behind IoT. Everyday objects with Internet connectivity. Now, take that concept and apply it to the world of factories and machines. So you're talking about things like sensors on factory equipment that can monitor performance or systems that can control manufacturing processes remotely. You got it. And that's what we call the Industrial Internet of Things, or IIoT for short. It's basically using that Internet connectivity to make industrial operations smarter and more efficient. But then we have Industry 4.0, which is kind of like the next level of this evolution. It's often described as the fourth industrial revolution. And it's all about this fusion of digital technologies with physical systems. So blurring the lines between the digital world and the physical world in factories. Exactly. And the book really does a great job of explaining why Industry 4.0 is such a big deal. It's not just about making small improvements in how things are made. It's a fundamental shift in the whole manufacturing process. So are we talking about moving from mass production to something more like mass customization? Yes. Like creating products that are tailored to individual needs. You got it. And that's made possible by a whole bunch of new technologies, which the book explores in detail. And this is where things start to get really futuristic, right? Oh, yeah. It's like we get a sneak peek into the factory of the future. Absolutely. It covers robots, 3D printing, artificial intelligence, mm. all these technologies that are driving smart manufacturing. It's pretty mind-blowing stuff. It is. But it's not just like a list of technologies. No. It explains how they work, what their potential benefits are and even what challenges they might present. It's a very thoughtful analysis. Yeah, so it's not just a tech showcase. It's like a thoughtful analysis of how these technologies are impacting manufacturing yeah. and what that means for the future. Exactly. It really is. And, you know, one of the things I really like is how it dives into specific examples. Okay. Like when they're talking about robots, you know, it goes beyond just those uh, those typical industrial robots that we all kind of picture in our heads. Right. You know, big arms welding things. They actually talk about uh, different types of robots, like these collaborative robots that are designed to work safely alongside humans. They call them cobots. Oh, cobots. Yeah, I've seen some videos of those. It's well, pretty cool how they can work with people in factories. Yeah. Doing tasks that would be dangerous or maybe just super repetitive for a human to do on their own. Yeah, exactly. But the book actually like goes deeper into that whole like impact of robots on jobs. It does. It directly addresses that fear, right? That robots are going to come and steal all of our jobs. Yeah. And they make a really compelling argument, you know, using statistics and real world examples to show that uh, actually nations that are using more robots often see fewer job losses. It's kind of counterintuitive, but it makes sense when you think about it. It does. It's like the technology is creating new opportunities and making those existing jobs safer, maybe more efficient. Yeah, and even bringing manufacturing back to certain countries. Oh, interesting. Yeah, there's this thing called reshoring. Okay. Where uh, companies are actually using robots to bring manufacturing back to their home countries. So rather than replacing jobs, they're actually helping to create them. That's a really good point. Like technology, if it's used strategically, it can actually be a force for good. Absolutely. But what about 3D printing? I always think of that as something that's more for like hobbyists, you know, people in maker spaces. How is that impacting manufacturing at a large scale? Well, 3D printing or additive manufacturing is definitely having a huge impact. Okay. And uh, the book talks about how it's changing the game, particularly in industries like aerospace. I think I remember reading about a company that 3D printed an entire rocket engine. I think I saw that too. It's wild. It's pretty incredible. And the book explains, you know, 
how this technology can completely transform the way we think about production. Imagine, you know, being able to print parts on demand right there in the factory as you need them. Right. So it can drastically reduce lead times, minimize waste, and even make it possible to create these highly customized products. It's like having a mini factory at your fingertips. It kind of is. But they also talk about digital twins. Oh, yeah. Which sounds super sci-fi to me. What are those? Digital twins are one of the most fascinating concepts in the book. Yeah. And they do a good job of explaining it. Basically, a digital twin is a virtual replica of a physical product or a process. So it's like having this digital mirror that reflects everything that's happening in the real world. Oh, I see. So you can simulate and analyze how something's going to perform before you even build it. Exactly. Or make changes to it in the real world. You can use digital twins for all sorts of things, you know, from design and prototyping to testing and optimization. Okay. But one of the most exciting applications is in this thing called predictive maintenance. Yeah, okay. So imagine being able to spot potential problems in a machine or a system before they even occur. So it's like a virtual crystal ball for your operations. That's a great way to put it. So you can prevent these huge costly downtime events. Exactly. And it's not just about preventing those problems. They can also help companies optimize their processes Hmm. make their products more efficient, Okay. and even develop entirely new business models. It's amazing how much potential this technology has. Yeah. But we've got to talk about blockchain too, right? Oh, yeah. That's another big one. It's something that I always associate with, like, cryptocurrency. But the book talks about how it's being used in manufacturing as well. Yeah, it's definitely making its way into the manufacturing world. And the book explains how it can be used to create this secure and transparent record of a product's entire journey. Okay. From the raw materials all the way to the finished product. So it's like a, a digital trail that follows it. Exactly. And because blockchain is decentralized and virtually tamper-proof, right. it can really help combat counterfeiting. Okay. And just ensure the authenticity of products, which is a huge deal for certain industries, you know, like pharmaceuticals, aerospace, even luxury goods where safety and trust are paramount. It's interesting how this technology that started in the financial world is kind of finding its way into all these different industries. It really is. It's pretty fascinating. But with all this amazing technology we've been talking about, I'm curious, like, what does the book say about the role of people? Yeah, that's a big question. In this future of smart manufacturing, <laughs> are we all going to be obsolete? Well, that's one of the most important points the book makes. Even with all these incredible advancements in technology, people are still absolutely essential to smart manufacturing. I was going to say, it would be a pretty sad picture if humans are just completely out of the equation. Yeah, I think the key takeaway is that certain skills, what they call durable skills, become even more important in this landscape. Okay. It's not just about having that technical know-how. It's about things like critical thinking, problem solving, communication, adaptability. These are the skills that machines can't replicate. It sounds like it's more about humans and machines working together. Exactly. They're each kind of playing to their own strengths. And the book emphasizes that that collaboration is key to unlocking the true potential of smart manufacturing. So we've talked about all this amazing technology that's shaping smart manufacturing. But I'm curious, what does the book say about the actual skills people need, mm. you know, to thrive in this new world? Is it all coding and engineering? You know, that's a great question. And the book makes a really interesting point. It says that alongside those technical skills, what they call durable skills, are becoming even more crucial. These are skills that are transferable across different jobs, different industries. Yeah. And they're the ones that machines can't easily replicate. So things like problem solving, critical thinking, communication, adaptability, all that. Exactly. Those are the skills that will really set people apart in the smart manufacturing landscape. It's not just about knowing how to operate a machine. It's about being able to think critically, analyze data, solve complex problems, and communicate effectively with others. It makes sense. It's like those skills are the foundation that allows you to build upon any kind of technical knowledge that you might acquire. Exactly. It's like a solid base. And the book offers some really great advice on how to actually develop those durable skills. Mm. It talks about um, the importance of seeking out new challenges, you know, stepping outside your comfort zone, right. being willing to learn and adapt constantly. So it's like embracing lifelong learning. It is. Be open to new possibilities. Yeah. And the book also stresses the importance of actually getting involved in the manufacturing community. Okay, how do you do that? Attending industry events, 
you know, visiting factories, actually connecting with professionals in the field. So it's like immerse yourself in that world, get firsthand experience. Exactly. Build relationships with the people who are actually shaping the industry. Yeah, it makes sense. But it sounds like the book is really emphasizing that this future of manufacturing is not some far off concept. It's not. It's happening now. It's happening now. And we all have a role to play in shaping it. So what does this all mean for someone listening to this deep dive? whether they're a student, a teacher, a parent, or just someone who's curious about the future of manufacturing? What's the big takeaway message? I think the biggest takeaway is that smart manufacturing is creating this world of incredible possibilities. And it's not just for engineers or tech whizzes. It's for anyone who is willing to learn, adapt, and embrace the changes that are happening. Yeah, it's about realizing that Manufacturing is a dynamic field. It's an innovative field. It is. And it offers so many opportunities for people with all sorts of different skills and interests. Exactly. You know, the book really encourages us to see manufacturing not as something outdated or irrelevant, but as this vital part of our economy, our future. Yeah. And it reminds us that we all have a role to play in shaping that future. We do. Whether it's through the careers that we choose, the products we buy, or the way we educate the next generation. So if this has piqued your interest, we encourage you to check out Mike Nager's book. It's called The Smart Student's Guide to Smart Manufacturing and Industry 4.0. Explore this field. It's fascinating. Yeah, it's a really insightful and accessible read, whether you're a student, a teacher, a parent, or just someone who wants to understand where the world of manufacturing is heading. Absolutely. And we hope that this deep dive has given you a little glimpse into that world and sparked your curiosity about all the possibilities that are out there. Thanks for joining us on this journey into the world of smart manufacturing. We hope you've learned something new and maybe you're feeling inspired to think a little differently about how things are made and how we can all be part of shaping a brighter future. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep creating.